Thursday segment of Creep Show. And then after this is done, you can get photos of them like that. Cecilia! Uh, in the meantime, we've got all of these amazing students, uh, well, graduates, I don't want to say students, that would be rude. Uh, these amazing effects people here, and they have a microphone. They're going to be walking us through a little bit of the process that's going on. I, at the most, am just going to be sitting here talking about Creep Show because I like that movie, and I have nothing to add when it comes to makeup. So, uh, real quick, for self-promotion, I am the host of the podcast Horror Movie Night. Go ahead and subscribe to us on any podcasting app. It's a comedy show about horror films from the 80s and 90s. But now, if someone wants to hop on the mic over there from the Tom Savini School, we can uh, get started talking about what's going on today. So I'm Allie, and this is Sam, and this is Brooke. We are all grads of the Tom Savini Special Makeup Effects Program, and I currently work there. Um, and yeah, so today we're going to be doing, this is a cast from the original mold. So this is as close to screen accurate as you're ever going to get. Um, I painted it with the direction of Tom. He gave me his blessing and his approval, so we're going to slap it on Mr. Amplis and make him real nice and spooky for you so he can start holding that cake head. Yes. That cake head, which is actually Piper Lori's head that we just repurposed for this today. So, yay! Oh. What do you want me to do? We're gonna have you sit, sir. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like these. These is good. Can everybody see you okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so if I'm hearing correctly, we're just waiting for some scissors to give some eye holes on the mask real quick. So but boom, scissors have been acquired. Applause! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a little game while they're getting ready called Easy Crowd Participation. Anybody here a fan of Creep Show? All right, here's another. Anybody like horror? Woo! All right, that's all I got, so. What if they say no? I just leave. It's been a long time since I've done this. How many years, when was it made? 80? Filmed in 81. <laughs> 40. 40. Gee whiz. I was, I was only two when. <laughs> Nosferatu. Yeah. There you go. Now we're talking. All right. I'm going to, I want to ask a couple questions about Creep Show real quick. So by a round of applause while they're getting everything ready down here, I'm going to name all the different segments. And I want you to clap for your favorite segment from the movie. I'm just curious. But it better be Father's Obviously, the first one, Father's Day. <laughs> All right, that's a, that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. I'm blank. Oh, uh, the I'm blanking on the full name because it's very long. But the Stephen King one where he's turning into a plant. Uh, <laughs> Jordy, there we go. All right, a little bit. Uh, something to tide you over. I'm a fan of that one. I like Leslie. The crate? Yeah! The crate could have just been its own movie. That thing was fantastic. And then obviously, uh, I, again, I, I think it's they're crawling all over something, whatever, the cockroach one, the terrifying cockroach one. They're creeping one, up five, on you. Okay, we got a little bit more for the cockroach. No, I mean, Father's Day, I think, is right there with the crate for most people as, as the, the segment you remember. You know, everybody on social media, Father's Day, if you're a horror fan, you're seeing the cake meme is popping up. I get it on Facebook every Father's Day. <laughs> yeah, as a child, that's what I would do every Father's Day. I would run around the house and I want my cake. Every Father's Day, my dad texts me that. <laughs> All right, so Brooke is getting an extension cord, so when we put the latex and Rice Krispie all the gross maggoty looking stuff on you, we can dry it real quick. Okay. Um, Okay. 
can everyone hear Brooke okay, or do you want me to move the microphone closer to her as she explains what's going on? If you don't mind me asking while you're down there getting those put on, but I feel like, you know, for people like myself who aren't into the special effects world hands on, you imagine it being so much of building stuff from scratch, but I think what I've learned from the little bit of research I've done is a lot of it does just start with household objects and recreating them. Right. Like, like the, with these gloves. It's taking household objects and kind of reinventing them into something else as opposed to building something from the absolute ground up a lot of the time, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of like beginners, they'll start off just doing stuff at home with whatever you can find in the kitchen. Um, the Dick Smith blood recipe just starts off with taro syrup and red and blue food coloring. Um, a lot of effects that you'll see in movies sometimes are just done because they were like last minute, hey, we don't have the effect for this. We're going to run to the craft services table and we're going to make brains out of bananas. We're going to make a wound out of out of frosted flakes or we're going to make magus out of Rice Krispie treats and latex. A lot of that stuff is just improvising and troubleshooting. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that meme that's like effects art is what I do and what I think I do and then what I actually do and what I actually do is like magic tricks all day long. <laughs> That's why Tom's book is called Grand Illusions, because they're just tricks. <laughs> well, I mean, even, you know, you look at something as low budget as the stuff that Troma does, and they have these these head explosions that you, that actually like kind of give you a, a reaction, and then you find out it's like a melon that they just threw a wig on and shot with a gun real fast and watched it explode. <laughs> Right now, we're just making sure that he can fit in these gloves um, and hold that tray for you guys because Pretty that would be. Fascinating, huh? Yeah. So it's funny if you're ever on set, it's a lot of like hurry up and then wait, um, and sometimes it's hurry up and figure out how to fix this. I know. Well, it makes me think of, you know, you read like IMDb trivia all the time that so and so spent how many hours in the makeup chair getting ready and. You know, I think at one point you think, oh man, it took them that many hours to put makeup on their face, but it's like, no, it's the whole, <laughs> it's the whole process of trial and error over and over and over again. I spent a week under plaster and uh, fittings and things like that, and then it took Tom a month uh, before I shot to finish the whole costume and makeup. John, do you remember how many hours you were in the makeup chair on the day of? It was, uh, the day of was easy because um, it, it, we, you know, by that time we had been, it had been fitted pretty well and uh, completed. So it was just putting the putting the costume on. Uh, the headpiece obviously is a is a mask and gloves, and then Tom had this emaciated chest that he had built. I was about 50 pounds lighter in those days, so uh, it helped. If only I were 50 pounds lighter now. <laughs> and did you, uh, in the movie, you come out of the ground. Did they have to bury you in some dirt for that they scene? Did. And how a, terrifying was that? I was in a foxhole. I was in a hole. They dug a hole about, I don't know, three or four feet deep. Uh, I had to scoop down, kneel down, um, uh, uh, and then they covered the top. Um, there was some kind of board, and then there was an opening at the front that I was able to bring my hand up and ultimately bring my body up through. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Very good. Oh, okay. Can you guys all hear him? Do you want the microphone? I can do that. 
And also, there's a, is there still a mic up there, or did we cut the audience? Is the mic? Okay, there, so there's also an audience mic up there if you have any questions about the makeup process or for John. Uh, you know, as long as he's able to talk before the prosthetic gets put on, feel free to also hop up there and, and ask some questions. It's better. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Okay, that works. So if and you we wanna... can just either tape them or tuck them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to do that? Exactly. Under here? Oh, and the suit. Okay. Yeah, mine ought to be good. All right. It looks All right. like they got the first glove going. It's not perfect, but it'll be great. Yeah. I mean, nothing's perfect. Yeah, it's actually doing it this way. This is about it. Yeah, please help. This feels better. This one's better. That one's better. Yeah. Hey, that's the one I did. This one's better. Well, here. <laughs> now we know why you work at the school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I've also been doing this for the seven years. Trans <laughs> the transformation <laughs> is taking place. So I have Best. the vest. Where are where are the photo? Where is the are the photo ops being taken? Over in the hotel. Oh, so we go yep. back. Well, yeah, right. I can drive you back. You get to walk like this. <laughs> I would never make you yeah, walk like I'll walk. So yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the people who booked hotel rooms not knowing there was a horror convention will love to see that walking <laughs> towards the hotel. <laughs> what you said, they said, I'm sure that the people who didn't realize there was a horror convention when they booked the hotel this weekend will love right. witnessing that. <laughs> If it wasn't so no, hot, no, I'd do it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't help either. Yeah, that's why I'm bringing on my mom. <laughs> if it were winter, it would be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. John, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John, so, yeah. hold your hands up to the audience. There you go. Now we're applying the time. I just do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing in a John, guest student for the tie. Yeah, Where's tie. your mom? Oh, hi. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to, uh, oh, to no, read the party. Please, please do. That's, that's something I probably should have learned in my studies. None of the 20 somethings know how to tie a tie. <laughs> to be fair, he's supposed to have been under the, in the ground for a couple yeah. decades. I'm sure the tie is not perfect anymore. <laughs> my Facebook page. <laughs> I'm only trying to take them for your Facebook page. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jim. question no, up in the crowd? Yeah, uh, sorry, this is going to the special effects people. Um, I see the Raisin Bran, the Rice Krispies, all kinds of stuff like that. Is there, typically, like if you're on a movie set where you're trying to do like gore effects and things, is there other things that you typically tend to have on hand, like, I don't know, like coffee grounds and stuff like that? Like what yeah. do you usually use as your staples? Oh, food yeah, yeah. is so important. Yeah, food's so like, important for sure. Food. Um, coffee grounds, I keep a whole thing of coffee grounds. Um, you can mix that into latex, you can mix it, you can just put it straight on, use it as dirt. So coffee grounds for sure, Rice Krispies, like I said, Frosted Flakes. Um, and then in a pinch, you can always just run to craft services. Craft services always have stuff that you can mix and match. 
attached to make things better? I was just gonna grab it. I mean, go for it, grab it. Thanks. There's the photo off. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Yeah, so what's happening next here, guys? So do you want to try it with your glasses on, or do you want to just take your glasses off and spend a day with your glasses? It's up to you. I better take them off. Okay. okay. And I have the truth. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're in Gettysburg. Oh. Okay, chairs are back. It's 1776. <laughs> I know they're not. So be careful when you stand. I will. I just don't want to tie. Would you like to tie Mr. Ames and How many plastic Same. bags did you put I in here? Very I very went to college for this. <laughs> Who said it? Jerry said it. It was all building to this moment, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, can you tell us what type of knot you're doing and why? I see you wear sandals, so. Well, as you can tell, Jerry, can you tell us what type of knot you're tying and why? All right. Are you ready? It's the hard hitting questions up here. Yeah, I'm ready. Where's my ponytail? It's low. Yeah, it'll hang out the back. So oh, okay. Oh, we weren't supposed to cut the lawn? <laughs> it took me all through COVID to grow it. All right, then you can see the mask is getting wide now. I feel like it's worth highlighting, like, this trial and error is very normal on even a movie set. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm just going to say, it's too close to my eye. Too close to your eye. Like in here? Or uh, the inside. I'm rubbing it against my eye. Okay, where are your eyes? Right here? Where oh, they should be? Right where the holes are. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll cut more off of it. <laughs> Did you play any jokes when you had the makeup on? Did I play any jokes? Yes. No, you know what though, I'm going to tell you a, 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 a little secret that nobody should really know. Yeah. Um, there's one shot with um, of, of him coming up out of the ground with a maggot. I guess they're called, on his face, crawling in and out of his eyes and his mouth. Uh, I was given the option to do it or not do it. And I took the not do it option. <laughs> I did not want those little creepy crawlers next to my face. And so a young woman, I can't remember her name, but she was on the crew bravely took on several spoonfuls of the maggots and wore it and it was her under the mask for that shot. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Nice. So I'm admitting to you that I'm a coward. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or highly intelligent. Um, but everything else I did. Was it your voice? No. Uh, I have one, there's one of my voice when he is walking away in the, in the fog. Uh, one, whatever it was. Uh, I forget.
forget what the line was. Well, that's what he's saying. Where you know, I want my cake. Yes, so yes, mm -hmm. yes. He's kind of mumbling. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that was me. That was the only sound I got. John Lormore, who who played the father. Um, if you'll notice in the in the movie, he was never on screen with another actor, uh, and it was because his um, his scenes were all shot separately from everyone else. He was not well at the time, and I think they had to go. I, I think they had to go to California to do his scenes, uh, which was a shame. I mean, he was really, from what I hear, he was a really nice, sweet man. I wish I had had the opportunity to have met him. So there's another little tidbit that might be interesting to you. Were you around for when Ed Harris bought it? Oh, I killed him. <laughs> yeah. so you were there for that. I was there for that. Yeah, I killed all Make those. Sure all the three of them. them well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody said that that was like the tombstone seemed like it was, yeah, uh, what do they call it, kinetic? Uh, well, it, he grabbed, he grabs to get out of it. And he ends up not grabbing her, he grabs her, Bedelia's dead body. Right. And pulls her, and then the, that's when the stone starts falling. Right. And so he freezes. Right. And it, and it looks like, it, it's hard to tell, but it looks like your character pulls the stone further. Right, right. Well, that's what I because, think. Because uh, he's not innocent either. He, you know, it's really that they're all bad people. They are. <laughs> they were <Yeah>. bastards. <laughs> so, John, you, got us, you, you, were the, you were the baddest of all, so you made the rest of them bad. John, I, certainly I, the meanest. John, I'd like to know a little bit about the casting, honestly, because obviously before this, you were the title character in Martin for yeah. for George. Did something happen between you and George where he's like, I want to put you in makeup and bury you underground instead? No, no. <laughs> no actually, um, uh, after after Martin came Dawn, um, which I helped to cast. Oh, cool. And um, in fact, I was uh, lucky enough, I knew uh, David Emge, who played Flyboy. Uh, he and I were friends since 72. He was an instructor at my alma mater in Pittsburgh. And uh, so we met there. And then we worked, many of us worked at Lady Astor's in New York uh, as waiters and cooks and things like that when we moved to New York. I moved to New York after Mark. And David also worked there. Christine used to work there. I mean, a, a ton of Romero, Scotty Reiniger worked there. Um, so there was a ton of us that came out of um, Lady Astor's, one of the most decadent uh, restaurants in New York City at the time. Uh, I think I want to check with the special the effects team, but is it looking like we're we're there? All right, we're almost there. So Absolutely. I mean, that's the main. The undead version of Nathan. 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 Um, uh, Tom Savini gave me a call. Tom, Tom Savini actually cast me. Is it because of your build? Yeah, because I was skinny at one time. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have a heavy... No, I wait, no, because, yeah. you know, he, w he was emaciated. Right. So, yeah. So, the, the, yeah. Anything else? No. Somebody has to have a question. Yeah, don't hey, forget, question. there is a mic up there. If you have any questions, go up to the mic. Or just yell them out. Just scream them. We can hear it. Hi. Nobody wants to say anything. Okay, this is John Amplis from Creep Show. Who here has seen Creep Show? You must have a question. I mean, we're, we seem to be having trouble with the titles of the episodes. You know what? <laughs> Maybe we should talk a little bit more. This is exactly how films are made. What you're dealing with right now, exactly. Of, crew members yeah. hanging around, talking about how they're going to do the shot, what what's what's happening, what they had for breakfast. Uh, 
Getting everything set up, this is exactly how it is on set. All right, are we ready to try to apply it again? We're gonna try it. All right, here we go. The hole's pretty large. Good. Okay, yeah, it was happening right in, right on my neck there. Okay, it shouldn't do that anymore, and if it does, we can cut out even more than we could chunk this there. So I noticed when we were trying to get the fitting here, you cut the back of the mask to get it to fit better. I'm sure that that's not just the thing that happens at a convention okay. fitting. I'm sure that happens that on happens movie sets. How do you go, do, do you just have that open space or is there a way to reseal that and tighten it after it's on? So usually um, we will just leave it open. It kind of depends on how well it fits on its own. So. Usually, depending on how long the mask is, you start with a small cut at the base of the neck. If you can slide it over, that's great. If you can't, then you cut a little bit more and repeat the process until it does fit. If you end up with a big hole and for some reason you don't have something to cover it or you don't have a way to see it, there are a couple options. You can tape it. You can try to glue it. It's probably not the best option. You can even go corset style and poke a couple holes, string something through, and tie it up. Basically, whatever you can do to make this thing fit and look appropriate is what you're gonna do. And a lot of times, it's trial and error more so than anything else. Sir, thank you. Yeah. Especially because, fun fact, we, it was three of us putting this together in three different cities. Yeah. And until today, he has never seen it or touched it. Nope. So that's why there's all this trial and error happening. A lot of times it will happen like in a studio, in a shop, behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, you'll, you're kind of seeing it firsthand. Yeah, I would say um, on a set, probably before anything else, the costuming department would get involved and talk to John. They'd get his measurements, they'd get him fitted in a suit meant for him. The way that I had to do it was um, Craig uh, sent me measurements. He said, this is the size the suit's supposed to be. If that's the size it is, good, go ahead and get started. Uh, and I messaged that's John, what we got. Hey, yeah. it's your size, and yep. it's a whole bunch of things. Yeah, and then it was a whole bunch of back and forth. Does this size work? Is this okay? Yeah. Okay, this is what we'll do. And the kind of coordinating from, uh, we're, we're all probably about two, three hours apart from each other. Yeah. So, And John had never met any of us before yesterday. Well, so. I actually went to Living Gun Weekend specifically to meet him to make sure that he knew me before we yeah. did this. I wasn't gonna show up and be like, hey, I'm slapping some weird stuff on your face <laughs> in a couple months. All right, are we ready for, for take three? Here we go. If it fits perfectly, I want the loudest applause yes, ever. Yes, we need it. <laughs> and there are times where you will do this five, ten times before it fits. How is it, John? Are we getting the thumbs up? If you cut too much. No, that's not too bad. Is it, are we Will you blacken his eyes? So, typically, yes, uh, yes. we we'll blacken his eyes. Um, and so we have makeup over at the photo op room. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a photo. If it, if it doesn't show up, then we're gonna leave it. That way we don't have to worry about taking the black off of his eyes. But if we need to, then absolutely, yeah, we will blacken it so that way you guys get the full experience and all of your photo ops. But typically, yes, you will blacken them. Yeah, whatever is both opportune for us and convenient for John. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you guys are all working in tandem over the next thing, I do want to know each one of you kind of what brought you into this crazy world of special effects. Because I know when I was a kid watching the, the making of Thriller behind the scenes thing and seeing, you know, Michael Jackson basically breathing through straws in his nose, I was like, that looks like the worst thing ever. <laughs> and I, I had no interest in it, but I'm assuming you guys saw something about it and were like, oh, I want to do that to people constantly. It's and it's been a, a butt of quite a few jokes. I have seen a very limited amount of horror movies, and people are always like, how can you possibly work in this field and not have seen the classics? Um, I, when I was 10 or 11, I saw Face Off for the first time, and I was like, that, that is what I wanna do. And so the whole time I was in high school, it was practicing, reading, watching, whatever, and then when I graduated high school and I found out about Douglas, I was like, you know what? I don't have a, a, 
any other plans. I love this, this is what I'm interested in. I'm gonna do it, and so I did. So, and I graduated last year in January. Nice. How about the, how about the two of you down there as well? Um, so I, actually, my, <laughs> this is a long story. Um, I saw that same thing, the thriller, and I was like, this is terrifying, and I was terrified of it for the longest time. I was like, I want no part of anything like this. It scares the Jesus out of me. And then I saw Night of Living Dead. And I was like, you know what? This is also zombies, but less scary. So what are they doing differently that makes me want to do this? Um, and then Buffy came out, and I saw all of those creatures and all of those practical effects, and that was it. That was, that was the thing that I was like, whatever they're doing, I'm doing it. Um, and so then my dad knew of Tom Savini, and I was like, I don't really know who this guy is, but I really want to, to get to know him, I guess. So I met him at a convention, started working, doing conventions with him. He said, I have a school, and that was it. Awesome. Yeah. How about you, Jerry? This is Sam. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Sam. I keep Jerry. calling you Jerry. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry's the next demo. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the diamond? Uh, <laughs> so for, for me, it's pretty much kind of the same. Uh, growing up, I was always the kid who, uh, does anybody remember like Sci-Fi Channel doing their monster movie every week? Mm -hmm. Like on Fridays? I love that. Um, just, I like creatures and monsters, and I prefer them over the slashes, because any psycho can pull a knife. But, don't hate me. Uh, you mean when Sci-Fi Channel was good? Yes. Argue. Yeah, what yeah. was the spelling before at that time? Was, <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't like a lot. Uh, it was before they changed the spelling. Uh, we had like Wyoming or Herb or whatever now. Uh, but, um, one of my favorite movies has always been Gremlins, and seeing how they would, um, it was a Fangoria um, magazine that was at Blockbuster. I could age myself there. And, um, Maybe when Fangoria was good, yeah. You're talking about all the good and, and there would be the articles in Fangoria, and then there was um, the puppets that were the uh, Gremlins that were like a physical, actual thing. It wasn't computer generated, it was like something you could touch. And I just always wanted to make monsters and I, being a mad scientist isn't a real career, so <laughs> this is the next best thing. And I found the school through, again, Face Off. Um, there was one season where it was like every other contestant was like, well, the Savini School, Douglas Education Center. And they just kept bringing it up, so I Googled it, um, sent out for information and Six months later, I was attending the school, and I graduated in January, uh, right before COVID. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to Hollywood, no I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to Pittsburgh. And Sam, uh, if you can, let it, can, on the mic, let us know what's going on with the, uh, the blow dryer here. <laughs> Blow dryer, we're trying to dry the mixture of latex, paint, and Rice Krispies. So not just an important meal, part of your morning meal. <laughs> um, and to just kind of quicken the drying process, uh, we're just using a blow dryer. Latex is air drying. So we're so. pretending I didn't steal the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this was, uh, we brought this. It was not from the hotel. Uh, just a coincidence. Uh, I, I researched the, the hair dryers at the hotel carry. Coincidence, too much effort. Coincidence. Yeah, most people bring their hair dryers in a tiny little bag with the name of a hotel on the front of it. There's nothing Listen, like that. Listen, I that custom made, okay? <laughs> it's my name, it's embroidered. My mother made it, thank you. <laughs> so, the, the last little bit that we just did right now, um, like you said, it was the Rice Krispies and the latex. That was the thing that Tom really, really, really prided himself on, is the fact that he used that Rice Krispies because at the time nobody was really doing it. Um, he's really like the guy for those like quick and fast, dirty effects. Um, and he's invented a lot of the stuff that we use today. If it wasn't him, it was big for sure. Um, so the whole time that I was doing this, he was like, don't forget the Rice Krispies, don't forget the Rice Krispies. And I was like, don't worry, Tom, we're on it. So this morning we got here and he said, hey, we still have to go get Rice Krispies. <laughs> no, we totally have. Yeah, we had, we had a list, we checked everything off. Uh, so real quick also just for the people in attendance I was given information and uh, you know don't stampede out of here but if you didn't get a ticket 
to be part of this photo op. There are still tickets available and they can take you right at the photo op door. Um, I don't know exactly the time for it, but pretty much when this is over, maybe make a, a, a run over there if you want to get a photo in the makeup. Do you have a question up there? I was just curious to know if uh, the special effects artists that were involved with The Walking Dead, if they would have any kind of uh, heavy influence as of, you know, from the 80s until now, as far as what, you know, you're involved with. Um, they are with One more time? Yeah, yeah can you repeat very, that? Very, very quiet. Yeah. We have yeah. gentlemen in the scary looking costumes. Oh, yeah, I was just asking, uh, I was just wondering if the special effects artists that were involved with the Walking Dead, right. if they would happen to have a heavy um, influence you know as to what you learned so, um, along the way yeah, from when you like first started like up till now. Oh, gotcha, so you're saying like now that we have all these people doing the Walking Dead, how has that kind of evolved the special effects from like the 1980s a little bit yeah exactly because okay. the, the resources itself is quite vast you know what I mean there's a lot more involved now and it seems like there's a lot more involved so I was just wondering if there was a heavy influence with the uh, special effects artists that are involved with the walking sure. dead if they had any heavy influence on the US today yeah I mean absolutely like that I, I love the walking dead I love Before any of you had gone to the Tom Savini school, had you tried to do your own special effects on your own, maybe for like a project for a friend or anything like that, or was the school really your start in doing it? No, no, no. I was a makeup manager at Haunt for a really long time before I came to the school, um, and that again was a lot of this, this stuff with latex and cotton buildups, airbrushing, um, going to the Halloween store and figuring out what's out there, what we can use. Um, and it's, for me personally, being a makeup artist, I like hit the books immediately to figure out like anatomy and stuff. Nice. Um, so that really helped when I got into the school. And first thing we had to do was learn anatomy. I already knew a lot of my anatomy. Um, but yeah, I, d I definitely did a lot of that stuff for a while before I came to the school. Uh, so I see that Sam cut off John's ponytail to start applying it <laughs> on the top of his head. On the <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what it, what you're using for the fake hair here? So this is just crepe hair. Um, it's like a white blondish color because you guys remember the original when he was alive, he had like white gray hair. Um, and so we're just sticking it into the latex that's already there, um, just to kind of give that decaying, like you lost some hair look to it. And then really, once we slide that mask under the suit, that's it. We're done. He's ready to go. So you had mentioned that uh, Night of the Living, that the original, the black and white, is an influence, and he had mentioned that Gremlins is an influence. Um, so these are like, you know, a 50-year-old movie, a 30-something-year-old movie. I know you guys are no way near, you didn't see those when they came out. No. Uh, what was influential about older films when you saw them? So I think for me it was, like I said, like the thr thriller behind the scenes, Scared the living daylights out of me. I so that, that would have been like the that would have been like the early '80s, yeah. early yeah. mid '80s that you saw a Thriller, mm -hmm. and then you saw Night of the Living Dead. 
Yeah, so for me, it was the fact that it was such an older movie, and it was in black and white, and there wasn't really any gore, there wasn't any, like, major jump scares, and it was still super terrifying. And so it was like, with being so minimal, how can you be that terrifying? What is it that we're doing? Yeah. What is it that they're doing to create that terror? Yeah. And and what, so what did you like about, well, when did you see Gremlins first, and what did you, (laughs) what did it become, why did it become a influence? I saw Gremlins, uh, uh, probably 11 or 12. Um, It's like a 1982 movie, maybe? Or 84. 84, so you didn't see it when it came. No, no, I was born in 89, um, so I saw it probably in there, I guess the early 2000s mm-hmm. then. Um, but my, also my school library had um, like really cheap cassettes of, it was like audiobooks, and they had the Gremlins movie audiobook, and I would go to sleep every night with it, <laughs> and I would just have it on like a stereo, and I would listen to Gremlins, I really liked watching it. My parents made me stop when I slept walk into the room in the middle of the night and said, they're coming, and ran. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it, again, it's just the practical effects for me. I like that you can, this was something that someone thought up, built, and produced into the world. Yeah, That's what I got it. it yeah. just, I, that, that for me was what it was. It was just that it was like a real, physical, tangible thing. They made a character. Yeah. yeah. You appreciated the character. So, at at the risk of sounding a little bit like Fred Willard in uh, Best in Show with a dumb question, but I am curious, uh, is there a reason why you do the jacket first, then the mask, and then try to fold the mask under the jacket as opposed to doing the mask and then just having him put the jacket on over top of it? Typically, I would do the mask first. Okay. Yeah, no, typically I would would do the mask first um, for a couple of reasons we didn't. One, we wanted to make sure the suit fit him, and two, we wanted to keep him in the mask for as little time as possible. And in honor of that, let's try to get that jacket on there. And once again, when they button that up, I want to hear an explosion in this audience of applause. giving birth but in reverse. <laughs> Mom's hard work just got ripped out. She's gonna do it again. Please. Yeah, the tie could have probably gone on last. We wanted to make sure it all fit. Yeah, you know. It might be a tight tie. I'm fine. 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 I'm f
definition. Oh, oh no, we're just getting that talked. No, we're just talking about there's okay. so many layers to cut that out. Yeah, it, it feels less. Yeah, well, you've got about an inch more of skin under there now. You want to tell us a little while she's getting that tie taken care of does someone want to tell us a little bit about the uh, pamela Voorhees head being redone as the cake head so that's actually not the pamela Voorhees. that's piper Lori. oh trauma. piper Lori. okay yeah. yeah so has anybody seen trauma anybody anybody yeah a couple people yeah so when when her head gets lobbed off and it rolls across the floor and it comes to land so when this is probably a tom story i don't know if i should tell it um they did a completely different effect to make it so that her head looked as if it was rolling but when it comes to land, it was, it was that head. So that, that's it. And then when Tom had his haunt, Terramania, they repurposed it for that reason. And it's been sitting at the school forever and ever and ever. When this opportunity came up, Jerry said, I know exactly what you need. And he gave us that. Yeah. And it's been sitting on my kitchen counter for months. <laughs> so, somebody came over and they were like, you know, I was really expecting to see you have like a severed head in your, oh, there it is. <laughs> John, is John photo ready for, for now? I think so. All right. Well, let's hear it, everybody. A big thanks to everyone down there. Yeah, here. John. They've got, or at least some of them have more work coming up. Uh, it won't be me narrating that time. It'll be uh, Mr. Lobo, who's been up here doing some stuff as well. So I'm going to use this opportunity one last time to say check yeah. out Horror yeah. Movie Night Podcast, hmnpodcast.com. Yeah. My name is Matt Kelly. I've got a table right next to the photo booth, so come play some Zombies Ate My Neighbors or uh, buy a t-shirt or something. All right, thanks, everybody. for coming. Welcome to day 325 of Creature Feature Weekend. How is everyone holding